Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Joining us here on Real Agriculture now, we have Ian Epp, agronomy specialist and a weed point person with the Canola Council of Canada. And uh, Ian, we're at Canola Lab in Brandon talking about cleaver control. And uh, cleavers, of course, have been a, a major problem, are a major problem weed for uh, growers in a, in a good portion of Western Canada. When it comes to uh, management techniques, more the cultural side of things, what, uh, what are some of the findings that you've, uh, you've found in, in your research looking specifically at cleavers? Yeah, so integrated weed management is really important for all weeds and all crops, but cleavers specifically, you can, re you can really improve control by using an integrated approach. A um, couple key things, seeding rates, row spacing, things like that by themselves will s reduce cleaver uh, control or improve cleaver control a little bit, but we can add a few of those things, seeding rates, con uh, control, timing, rotation, a few of these really small things together. We can have a net uh, drop in cleaver return to the seed bank, which overall has a net benefit for the farmer over the long term. So what are some of the, the specific things that growers, the steps that growers can take? Well, cleavers can be a winter annual or a summer annual. For the first thing, we're going to control them when, as soon as we can, really, when they're small. Cleavers and any weeds, really, they're more susceptible when they're small. So controlling them in the winter uh, winter and the fall when they first come up is really important. If they do happen to overwinter, uh, adjusting our rate of glyphosate or maybe adding a tank mix partner in the spring can be really important. So adjusting our products and our rates to fit the staging of the cleavers is really important. Um, any cleavers that do overwinter and then uh, and aren't controlled properly in the fall or in the spring, if they enter the crop system, they're very hard to control just from a staging standpoint. They're too far advanced. And that critical period of weed control is really early in the canola stage. So we're going to control cleavers really early. If we can control cleavers in that one to four leaf stage, we will, uh, there won't be seen as much of a yield uh, loss from cleavers. So controlling really early. So uh, spraying twice possibly, spraying really early. In canola, we have good options in that one to three whorl stage. So that's a fairly small cleaver. So it's really important for growers to once after they planted their canola to stage them uh, to stage their cleavers, identify the cleavers, and control them fairly early. Some growers have been cutting back on seeding rates. Could that uh, put things at, at risk when it comes to, to cleavers? Yeah, so our seeding rates in general are made to maximize our yields, and canola has a lot of plasticity. You can get the same yield with a low seeding rate, but there's a lot of risk in that. Um, from a biological standpoint, you're asking for a resistance problem. You're asking a lot of your herbicide. Your herbicide has to do all the heavy lifting as far as controlling the weeds. If we can bump up our seeding rates, we can actually reduce the amount of cleavers in the, that germinate that are competitive. We can actually get a crop that hopefully canopies a little bit quicker. And that competition, the plant, canola is a fairly competitive crop, especially at higher densities. So that takes a lot of selection pressure off of our herbicide. Integrated weed management really relies on many small hammers. Or re they call them small hammers. Really small, small techniques that help improve weed control. Herbicides are obviously a big one and they're really important. But in order to maintain herbic our herbicides from a resistance standpoint, we really need to do all these other things, which really boil down to good agronomy, which really helps our plants compete and outcompete the weeds. Uh, another thing is crop rotation. We can really do things with crop rotation to improve our weed control, partially from a life cycle standpoint, partially from a uh, different herbicide standpoint or different crop competitive. So cereals, we have a lot of good options for cleaver control. So making sure that we're picking a product that really maximizes cleaver control in our cereals. There are several actives that are really important. Um, remembering that we have group two resistant uh, cleavers across Western Canada. They're a growing problem, especially if you have a high level of cleavers in your uh, cleaver population and you've grown a pulse in the, in the past, there is a good chance that you've selected four group two resistant cleavers. So keeping that in mind, using a wide variety of uh, herbicide products that help minimize selection pressure. And then in cereals, we can control up to about the eight whorl stage, which is really good. for So that window is a lot larger. In canola, we, have, we can control cleavers, but that window is quite small. I guess the, the consideration with pulses preceding canola or being in the rotation with canola in a year like this year with big pulse acres is something to, to consider? Absolutely. Uh, cleavers are as big a problem in pulse production as they are in canola production. Um, both have limited herbicide options and tight windows to control. So if, if, if people that are have a high, that have pulses and canola in the rotation need to really manage we really need to manage our cleavers in those years, but also really do a good job in subsequent years when you have a cereal in the rotation or some other crop in there to reduce those population, return the amount, reduce the amount of seed returning to the seed bank. All right. Thanks for your time, Ian. Thank you.